Standing, uh, let me invite uh, one more VIP guest here, and I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Antonio de Aguiar Patriota, Minister for External Affairs for the Federative Republic of Brazil. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. And let me congratulate the Republic of Korea for assuming the presidency of the Security Council for the month of February. I also thank Your Excellency for convening this timely and important high-level debate on the protection of civilians in armed conflict. I would like to greet Her Excellency Luis Mushikiwabo, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Rwanda, and His Excellency Elmar Mamadiarov, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan, and thank them for their contribution to this debate. I am equally grateful to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and for his very informative briefing, as well as to High Commissioner Navi Pillai and Mr. Philip Sperry of the International Committee of the Red Cross for their remarks. Mr. President, as we gather to discuss this crucial item in the Council's agenda, our departing point must be the acknowledgement that, as indicated by the Secretary General in his latest report, the state of affairs regarding the protection of civilians is abysmal, quote unquote. Civilians continue to be injured, displaced, and killed in great numbers and submitted to all kinds of hardship in many parts of the world. It is our collective moral and political responsibility to confront this situation and offer civilians under actual or potential risk improved prospects. The difficulties that have prevented us from adequately discharging our responsibilities on the protection of civilians do not stem from differences on the fundamental ethics underlying the concept. They stem from differences that prevent us from translating our common ethics into agreed policies that will lead to coherent and effective results. The use of force in the protection of civilians stands out as an issue that divides opinions compromises efforts towards a peaceful settlement of disputes, and distances us from dealing with the multifaceted issues surrounding protection. As regards the use of force, a Brazilian concept paper on the responsibility while protecting was shared with the Security Council in 2011. In our view, resort to military action should always be an exceptional measure after all peaceful means have been exhausted and only upon the authorization of this Council. And if force is authorized, it must be judicious, proportionate, and limited to the objectives established by the Council. One must be careful not to worsen a situation that puts civilians at risk and inadvertently contribute to further violence and instability. Furthermore, the Council should ensure before the wider membership that military action is monitored and resolutions are interpreted and implemented in a way that guarantees the observance of responsibility while protecting. Events in the recent past make us ponder whether direct military intervention or support to armed groups has led to improved circumstances for civilians or to further instability and violence. However, even as we ponder on past experience, we could easily agree on the notion that the most effective way to protect civilians is to prevent armed conflict, and should it arise, display a real commitment to its resolution by peaceful means. The Charter provides a basis for associating the maintenance of peace and security with the promotion of socioeconomic and institutional development, as well as respect for human rights. I had the opportunity to highlight this aspect in the debate under Brazil's presidency in February 2011 on the interdependence between peace, security, and development. It is possible to argue that the promotion of sustainable development poverty eradication and food security contributes to the promotion of peace and security by creating a more stable environment for civilians. Conversely, it is regrettable that the world should spend enormous resources on the development of weapons and military budgets while we are still short of meeting ODA targets as agreed in the 2002 Monterey Consensus. This disturbing situation was described by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in a powerful article published last August and as he said, the world is overarmed and peace is underfunded. If we are seriously to commit to the protection of civilians, and if we all agree this should be done first by avoiding the emergence of conflict, we must seek to revert this trend. And as was stated today by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, 
the upcoming conference on the arms trade treaty offers us an opportunity to take a meaningful step and agree on rules that will help sa spare civilians from the consequences of poorly monitored flows of arms. On the nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation front, consistent and balanced progress needs to be made. We cannot afford to leave this agenda unfinished. In this context, let me state that the Brazilian government condemns a new nuclear test carried out by the DPRK. We urge the North Korean government to fully comply with all relevant Security Council resolutions on the matter, and I associate Brazil to the press statement issued earlier this morning by the Presidency of the Council. In the same vein of approaching the protection of civilians as a means to avoid conflict, this Council should fully assume its responsibility regarding the plight of those who are victimized on a daily basis in protected conflicts such as the one between Israel and Palestine. The protection of civilians must be implemented in a universal and non-selective manner. Civilians ought to be equally protected against threats of violence, be it in Homs or in Gaza, in Kandahar or in Timbuktu. And multilateral efforts should comply with international human rights law and international humanitarian law, including in the context of the fight against terrorism. Under this heading, Brazil welcomes the announcement by the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Counterterrorism and Human Rights concerning the launch of an inquiry into the civilian impact and human rights implications of the use of drones and other forms of targeted killing for the purpose of counterterrorism and counterinsurgency. We welcome the increased participation of regional organizations, such as the African Union, in efforts towards mediation and conflict resolution in coordination with multilateral efforts in accordance with relevant provisions of the Charter. But at the same time, we must recognize that coordination between the regional and the multilateral has not always been satisfactory, and that improved governance will be required to effectively deal with situations of instability in which civilians are placed at risk. The complexity of the challenges requires inclusiveness in decision-making and in the implementation of decisions. And in this respect, a word on the long overdue Security Council reform is also justified. A more representative and legitimate Security Council can, and in my opinion will, help to lead to decisions and strategies that contribute to avoid conflict and protect a greater number of civilians worldwide. Negotiating and building common ground is the fundamental task of this Council. And in this regard, Diplomacy is of the essence and should not be equated, as it sometimes is, with lack of resolve. The phrase, there is no military solution to, is being increasingly used and may reflect the recognition that we are entering a phase of greater openness to dialogue, negotiation, diplomacy, certainly a tendency which Brazil would support. Syria certainly comes to mind and Brazil agrees with those who are of the view that there is no military solution to the Syrian crisis and that this Council should firmly and unequivocally rally behind the efforts of Joint Special Envoy Lakdar Brahimi on the basis of the Geneva Plan of Action, which clearly opposes militarization. Mr. President, I believe that after recent experiences in the use of force for the protection of civilians, the international community can now better appreciate the value of conflict prevention and the peaceful settlement of disputes, including as tools to ensure the safety of those whom it wishes to protect. And in conclusion, let me emphasize the importance of strategies that protect civilians in situations of conflict through non-military efforts. First, we see the need for a broader awareness on the importance of dealing with the prevention of conflict by peaceful means, including through the promotion of social and economic development, intensified efforts towards the full implementation of disarmament and non-proliferation commitments, and by seriously confronting crucial challenges such as Israel-Palestine, among others. But at the same time, in situations where conflicts do break out, we see the urgency of placing more emphasis on diplomacy and dialogue as the primary tools in addressing them. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank His Excellency Minister Patriota for his statement. There are uh, still a great number of speakers remaining on my list for this meeting, but I intend with the concurrence of the members of the Council to suspend the meeting until 3 p.m. The meeting is suspended.
Good afternoon. Just say that uh, we find uh, the debate that was organized today by the Korean Presidency of the Security Council uh, of great importance. Uh, Brazil has been developing some thoughts uh, on the topic of the protection of civilians in armed conflict. As you are aware, uh, we have in particular defended the notion that in addition to the responsibility to protect civilians, one must exercise responsibility while protecting. And a conceptual note was circulated in 2011 on this very topic. Subsequently, the report by the Secretary General on the R2P concept, the responsibility to protect, included uh, a special section on our ideas. And we have welcomed the um, manner in which the membership of the United Nations has responded to these suggestions, uh, which uh, we find an encouraging sign. Uh, so today, I came to New York to um, express our uh, conviction that the United Nations can and should do more in protecting civilians, but not only once a conflict erupts. In fact, uh, there's much to be said about um, collective efforts to prevent conflict from erupting. And this is where I outlined some ideas on how the international community should fulfill their commitments to assist development uh, in accordance with the Monterey Consensus, how we must renew efforts uh, with respect to disarmament and non-proliferation and include uh, renewed efforts on the arms trade treaty uh, with the upcoming conference and how also some of the items which are of crucial and strategic importance to peace and security, including for the protection of civilians such as Israel, Palestine, should not be outsourced and left uh, outside the agenda of the Security Council, among others. So this is by way of introduction. Uh, thank you for your interest. Sure, can I ask, I wanted to ask you about one uh, a matter that's on the agenda of the Council, which is Mali, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know whether you think Obviously, France said that it had to act when it, when it did because the, the, the Islamists were moving south. But do you think, what, what do you think of what's developed since in terms of getting that operation under Resolution 2080, 2085 or reporting enough to the Council? How does this, does this comply with your idea of all action being taken under the Council or should more be done to bring it back under the Council's uh, control? Well, uh, we welcome um, uh, consistent efforts for the implementation of 2085. Um, we have been following the uh, efforts uh, carried out by the ECOWAS countries and under the African Union sponsorship. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, uh, Africans themselves uh, assume full responsibility for the stabilization of Mali at the earliest possible uh, opportunity. On another matter, please, regional matter, it would be Venezuela, and since it's a neighbor of Brazil, how, do you, how does Brazil see the absence of President Chavez for the last two months from Venezuela? I was just in Caracas before coming to New York, where I met with Foreign Minister Elias Hawa and Vice President uh, Nicolás Maduro. Uh, we uh, trust that uh, Venezuelans themselves uh, will know how to respond to these exceptional circumstances. Um, for the time being, uh, we're interested in pursuing our bilateral agenda. Uh, Venezuela has become a full member of Mercosul, so we are uh, concentrating on uh, ensuring that the full incorporation uh, takes place in timely uh, and as quickly as possible in a timely uh, fashion. Uh, I also uh, discussed some other regional matters and in international matters of mutual uh, interest. Thank you. Is it on two topics. Um, Brazil is becoming, uh, at the, in the UN, is becoming uh, um, a superpower. He's also claiming a, a seat, uh, a permanent seat on the Security Council. And today we had, for example, the issue of North Korea. And uh, Brazil has been, uh, in the, at least last year, in a negotiation process, uh, for example, with another problem in Iran. He was trying to find a solution. So the question is, do you think that, as far as to do with North Korea, the Security Council acted, uh, implemented all the solution possible in the negotiation process? I mean, we had already three resolutions. Apparently, they didn't work. There is something that the, that the Security Council should have done, or can something different? 
And the second topic completely, well, it's not so different, is that Iran had been arresting in the last uh, couple of weeks a lot of journalists. The last number count is 17. Uh, Article 19 on, a, on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights protect not only journalists, any human being that is trying to um, give information and also abroad. What do you think, what does Brazil think about this situation? Please, thank you. Well, on North Korea, let me say that earlier this morning, the foreign ministry uh, of Brazil issued a communique uh, expressing its concern and condemning this third uh, nuclear test. And now, during my speech at the Security Council, I had the opportunity of associating uh, Brazil to the press statement that was uh, issued earlier today by the President of the Security Council, uh, where Security Council members uh, strongly condemned the test, which is a grave violation of Security Council uh, resolutions adopted since 2006. Um, whether more can be done uh, or more effective strategies should be looked into. Um, I think in this case, uh, this is a situation where the Security Council actually has been able to proceed by consensus, um, which in itself is positive. Now, ideally, the uh, six-party talks uh, could be resumed, and one would uh, find a roadmap uh, for dealing with this challenge. Um, however, at present, I think uh, we should concentrate our efforts uh, on the uh, strategies that the Security Council is developing. And once again, let me stress that this is an area where consensus has been possible, and we support the efforts by the uh, Korean presidency uh, during this month. Um, the other issue of um, journalists being um, put into prison, well, of course, uh, in my country, there are no uh, journalists in this situation. We are extremely uh, and firmly committed to free speech, freedom of the press, and this is uh, a um, policy that we would like to see followed uh, around the world uh, indiscriminately. Do you have any, since you're here, and it's been a, it was something that your country worked on a lot while on the council, do you think that the Security Council has done enough to try to address what was viewed by many as a coup? And, and where do things stand in terms of CPLP and, and restoring democracy? Well, um, I think it's very important for the Security Council to follow up on its own statements on Guinea-Bissau. Uh, this is one issue where uh, coordination between the different sub-regional groups, uh, the African Union, the Portuguese-speaking community, ECOWAS, et cetera, the Security Council itself has not always proceeded in the most harmonious way. But we are confident that with the appointment of uh, Special Representative the Secretary General, Mr. Hamus Ochta, a Nobel Peace Prize laureate from uh, Timor-Leste, that um, uh, renewed prospects for uh, a um, way forward in Guinea-Bissau can be found. Finally, one, one more question. Regarding, regarding yeah. civilians in Libya, uh, two years now after the conflict is finished in Libya, mm. we haven't seen any report telling who was responsible for the death of tens of thousands of civilian Libyans. Do you think that this should be addressed by the Security Council? Well, this is being addressed by the Human Rights Council, and Brazil has just been re-elected, so we will be uh, assuming our chair uh, very soon. In fact, I intend to be present um, in a few weeks in Geneva for the uh, next session of the Council. And it is very important that these investigations uh, be carried out fully and that also uh, the um, investigations on the civilian deaths and casualties resulting from uh, the NATO intervention be fully carried out. Thank you very much.